We're just over three years away from the 2026 World Cup with no qualifying games having taken place as of yet. Now, the bookmakers have announced their favourites and dark horses, so I thought it'd be good today if we had a look at who they've gone for, who are the favourites, and trust me, there are some surprises. And if you've been following the channel, I've made quite a few predictions as to who will do well in the tournament and who will qualify. So let's see how I've done with those as well, according to the bookies. Before we get into it, just a quick disclaimer. I'll be using Skybet to show you the odds. Now, Skybet are an affiliate of the Sky Sports channel that we get over here in the UK. But just want to be clear, in no way am I sponsored by Sky Sports or Skybet. I've just used them because they have the best website with a clear view that will show you what the odds are. So it's just purely a personal preference. And of course, it goes without saying, if you do like a gamble, just make sure you gamble responsibly. Now, we'll get onto the favourites in just one second. But first of all, I want to have a look at the host nations because, as we know, USA, Canada and Mexico are the only nations to have qualified so far. And I want to see whether the home advantage has boosted their odds. Wow, OK. Starting with the USA, they're 25 to 1 odds on, making them the 10th joint favourites for the World Cup. Now, this is really interesting because I'm sure USA were 150 to 1 at the 2022 World Cup. So, as we can see, they're definitely taking advantage of the fact that, A, they've qualified already and, B, they're the host nation, obviously boosting them on there. But I don't think that's the only reason. Remember, there's 48 nations in the 2026 World Cup. So even if it wasn't hosted in USA, you'd have to fancy that they would make it there anyway. I think aside from the home advantage, the fact they've already qualified, bookies are recognising that USA are a young developing team of talented players. Most of their players play across Europe in the top leagues. And I've said it before, I definitely think they're going to have a good tournament. As for Mexico, well, they're currently 14th favourites, but at 50 to 1, to win the World Cup, whilst Canada are 80 to 1, making them 18th favourites. Now, if we're really honest, Canada are 80 to 1, we can definitely say that is because they're already qualified and a little bit of home advantage. It's very, very unlikely that Canada are going to win the World Cup or indeed go far in the tournament. So they're getting a boost there, but you'd expect their odds to shorten once other teams start qualifying. But Mexico at 50 to 1, again, similar to the USA, they were 150 to 1 at the 2022 tournament. But unlike USA, they definitely had a bad tournament, were really poor against Argentina, were really poor against Poland. So they'll definitely be hoping to improve. 50 to 1 seems fair. Right, so let's talk about the favourites to win it outright. The favourites, according to Skybet, are, let's do a drum roll, Brazil and France. Shock, I know. So Brazil and France are joint favourites at 6-1, to one, followed by England at 7-1, to one, Argentina, Germany and Spain, then at 10-1. to one. Not very surprising. I think Brazil are always favourites at this stage for every World Cup. And of course, France, just a penalty shootout away from winning the World Cup. They weren't at full strength. They had one of the youngest teams. And of course, if we look further into these odds, I'm sure there's going to be no surprise as to who the golden ball and who the golden boot's going to be. It's, it's, the favourite's going to be Mbappe, isn't he? No doubt about it. And of course, England... My lovely England, 7-1. to one. But I will say, I'm a fan of Southgate. I think he's done a great job for England overall. His game management, though, at times, is just really poor. And I think he plays it too safe. Anyway, I digress. I think the reason why England is so high in terms of the odds and a third favourites, you think of their young players. They've got Saka, they've got Foden, they've got Bellingham. They're going to be in their prime when they get to 2026. And they're going to be so much more experienced, having played another three rounds of Champions League games. I'd imagine they'd have more domestic trophies and titles and finals between them as well. It's going to be really, really exciting to see what that England team looks like in 2026. The only thing that I, as an England fan, will always tell you is, England will always let you down. A <laughs> penalty shootout we can't be relied on. So that's probably why we wouldn't be considered favourites for a tournament. But third favourites at this point, yeah, I get it. Although... If I am honest, I'm a bit surprised that Argentina are probably not ahead of us as third favourites. Argentina are 10 to 1. I think they're really good odds, I have to say, in terms of like if you wanted to put a bet on. would imagine that's because the bookmakers are thinking that the likelihood of Messi being at the 2026 World Cup is low. So therefore, the dynamics of that team change. What does that team look like? Again, with quite a lot of young players. But still, I say a lot of young players. We're talking about young players who are playing in top domestic leagues around the world. I think Argentina will have a really good team going into it. And then the final two that make up this top group, you've got Germany and Spain, both coming in at 10 to one joint with Argentina. Now, I've said it previously, I can understand why Germany are this high. People were saying once Germany got knocked out of the group stage at Qatar, that they weren't a good team. And I wholeheartedly disagreed. They have a world-class team. They underperformed, and they have underperformed for a couple of years now. That doesn't mean they don't have a world-class team. Spain, quite similar. We saw them absolutely annihilate Costa Rica, didn't we? But again, some poor performances there. They would have been disappointed to go out in the fashion they did on the penalty shootout. I can see why they're 10-1 to 1 as well. Again, another quite young team that's sort of coming through. Let's have a look at some of the outsiders, and we'll start with some of the European teams. And the first team I want to call out is Croatia. Remember, they finished third in the 2022 World Cup, but they're ranked here at 50 to 1. That's all down to one man, I would say. That's down to Modric, probably not going to be there at the 2026 World Cup. But I still think Croatia have a really solid team. 
very good, quite experienced. I think they'd do well in the tournament. I really do. To win it, probably not, but 50 to 1. I mean, some of the teams that are above them, USA, for example, 25 to 1, where Croatia are 50 to 1. Uruguay, 33 to 1. You know, they had a really bad tournament as well, and they're ahead of Croatia. So, quite interesting there. I think the bookmakers probably just want to see how Croatia get on in terms of qualifying, maybe see how they get on the Euros as well. Next up is Belgium. Their golden generation seems to have come and gone, and I think that's reflected in their 25 to 1 odds. Now, the other European team I want to point out is one of my predictions, actually to have a really good few years and that's Norway now Norway are 100 to 1 to win the World Cup outright now I know that doesn't sound absolutely fantastic but they're ahead of teams like Poland Serbia Sweden Austria Wales so I think what the bookmakers are seeing is the likes of Haaland Odegaard and the rest of the Norway boys should definitely make the tournament and probably should do quite well in it as well in terms of Africa Morocco were absolutely fantastic at the World Cup weren't they they're coming in at 66 to 1 so the bookmakers aren't giving them too high odds to win it or you know suggest that they'll repeat that fate again however what's interesting is the next best African side is Senegal all the way at 250 to 1 so the bookmakers really don't have a lot of hope for the African nations over in Asia the team with the best odds is Japan at 66 to 1 similar to Morocco but who do you think the Asian team with the second highest odds is Iran Australia nope it's actually China China are there at 250 to 1 yes joint with South Korea as well but China really at 250 to 1 that places them above Australia at 500 to 1 it places them above Iran at 500 to 1 um Saudi Arabia Qatar now China didn't qualify for the last World Cup in fact they weren't even close and I've actually said in one of my previous videos that China will not qualify for the 2026 World Cup despite there being additional spots in the Asian Confederation. The bookmakers clearly know something I don't. I mean, who knows what that is? Now, finally, a quick look at the Oceanic. There is one guaranteed spot for the first time for an Oceanic team. And we know, unless there's going to be some sort of miracle, that will be New Zealand. But despite that, the bookmakers are still ranking them outside. 1,000 to 1 odds to win the World Cup. No surprise, really. New Zealand have been there a few times. They've never really put up much competition. Now, obviously, I can't talk about every country. So in case you missed it, here's a full list so you can see your home nation. And of course, these odds will change over the next couple of years as qualifiers take place new players emerge, managers change, and teams find some form or lose form. But I think it's quite nice to have a look at this view before there's any qualifiers that have actually taken place. For me, no surprises that Brazil and France are favourites. England being ranked higher than Argentina might be a little bit unfair. I wouldn't say it's too much of a shock though. And in terms of dark horses, I'm sticking with the USA. I think they've got a really good developing team. The best odds though are Argentina at 10 to 1. And even without Messi, they'd be strong favourites to win the World Cup. China, 250 to 1. What have I missed? Really? I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more international football content. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win the World Cup and who are your dark horses. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you soon.